So now I want you to look at exercise three after you listen. Uh, so go ahead and take some time to complete the story. And um, after you complete the story, I will play an audio of uh, someone reading the story. Page 59, Exercise 3A. Last summer, Almaz volunteered at the public library downtown. She liked working with the older people because she felt that she was doing something worthwhile. Today, she is meeting with Steve, the volunteer coordinator at Quiet Palms, a nursing home. She wants to volunteer there to find out if she likes working in the healthcare field. Steve tells her about some of her responsibilities at Quiet Palms. He says it's very important for volunteers to be compassionate and patient when they are working with the residents. He asks Almaz to make a commitment to volunteer at least three hours per week. Almaz agrees to attend an orientation. She says she can't wait to start volunteering. Okay, so now I'm going to play an audio clip of a very similar um, story. Uh, and um, this is actually from your workbook, but I don't want you to open your workbook. Just listen to the audio uh, so you can practice your listening skills. Um, and then I'm gonna ask you some questions. So um, just listen, keep your books closed. Um, you can um, have your notebook out. Okay. Unit 5. Around Town. Page 54. Exercise 1. My Volunteer Experience by Danny Parks. Last summer, I was a volunteer at Stone Valley Children's Hospital. I'm thinking about a career in the childcare field, and I wanted to find out if I liked working with children of different ages. First, I talked to the volunteer coordinator at the hospital to get more information. Before I started, I had to attend three orientation sessions. I also had to pass some health tests. I made a commitment to volunteer two mornings a week. Every day at the hospital was different. One of my favorite jobs was to take the toy cart to the children's rooms. They could choose toys to play with and take home, and that made their time in the hospital a lot happier. Another job I enjoyed was delivering mail and reading cards and letters to the youngest children if their parents weren't there. I also helped little children eat their lunch during mealtime. Sometimes the volunteers did art projects like drawing and painting with the children. They really loved that. Some people think that it's difficult to work with children who are so sick, but that isn't true. The children made me smile and laugh every time I was there. To work with sick children, you have to be patient and compassionate. You don't really need any special training, just some free time and a desire to help. I can't wait to volunteer again this summer at the hospital. I think volunteering is a worthwhile experience for everyone. Okay, so the first question is, um, where did Danny volunteer last summer? Where did Danny volunteer last summer? Okay, so uh, you might you, you might have written um, Danny volunteered at Stone Valley Children's Hospital last summer. Danny volunteered at Stone Valley Children's Hospital last summer. Okay, um, and then the second question is, um, what does she want to do, uh, or in what field does she want to work in the future? In what field? Does she want to work in the future? Okay, so you could say she wants to work in the childcare field. 
uh, where you could say she is thinking about a career in the child care field. Okay, um, so the next question is, uh, what are three things Danny had to do before she became a volunteer? What are three things Danny had to do before she became a volunteer? Okay, so you could say she had to attend three orientation sessions. Okay, another thing she had to do, um, you could say um, she had to pass some health tests. She had to pass some health tests. And finally, she made a commitment to volunteer two mornings a week. Okay, so number three, um, what are four responsibilities Danny had at the hospital? What are four responsibilities Danny had at the hospital? Okay, so you could say, uh, she took the toy cart to the children's rooms. Uh, let's see, the next responsibility, um, you could say, she delivered mail and read cards and letters to the youngest children uh, if their parents weren't there. And then, um, she helped little children eat their lunch during mealtime. She helped little children eat lunch during mealtime. And finally, you can say, uh, sometimes um, she did art projects like drawing and painting. Sometimes she did art projects. And you can, you can make the sentence short like that. Some, sometimes she did art projects. Or you can um, include the um, other information in the sentence. You could say, she, uh, sometimes she did art projects like drawing and painting with the children. Okay, um, do you need special training to work with sick children? according to this article. Uh, do you need any special training to work with sick children? Okay, and the answer is no. Danny said no. Uh, then what do you need to work with sick children? What do you need? So you could say, uh, you just need some free time and a desire to help. You just need some free time and a desire to help. Uh, so, what are two um, qualities that describe people who work with sick children? Uh, what are two qualities uh, that Danny said um, describe people who work with sick children, volunteers who work with sick children? So, you could say, you have to be patient and compassionate. You have to be patient and compassionate. Um, you all know what patient means. Uh, what about compassionate? What does compassionate mean? So compassionate means that you uh, care about the feelings uh, of the other people. Uh, so you can relate uh, with them. Uh, you feel when they are hurting, you hurt with them. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and look at page 54 five in your workbook. So now you can open your workbook. Uh, let's look at page 55. Uh, if you want to go back and read uh, the listening activity we just did, it's on page 54. Uh, so you can read that um, on your own. Uh, but we're going to do page 55 together. So let's look at exercise two. Um, it says, <clears throat> circle the correct words. Uh, so I'm going to give you some time to uh, do this. Uh, let's look at the first um, example. Um, if you can't wait to go home, you want to go home. So, oh, there's actually um, a double print there. So, yeah, you want, not you want, want, but you want to go home. Uh, so, if you can't wait, can't wait means you're very excited. You're really looking forward to it. You really want to do it. So, uh, if you can't wait to go home, that means you want to go home. Okay, so I'll give you some time to finish um, numbers two through six. Okay. 
okay? Number two, Larissa is very patient with her children. She is always calm. Number three, the residents of a building are the people who live there. Uh, so you can see residents, um, the base word is reside. Reside means live. Number four, we had an orientation meeting before we started volunteering. Of course, an orientation meeting is always uh, before um, something, before. And also, if you look at that word orientation, uh, the base word is orient. Uh, orient means like to point in a certain direction. Uh, so before you start something, you need to be pointed in the right direction. So that's why it's called an orientation meeting. Um, okay, so number five, I think playing sports is worthwhile for children. It's a useful way for children to spend their time. Okay? And then number six, I made a commitment to the hospital. I will volunteer one day a week. All right, so that was, that was pretty easy. Um, let's go ahead and look at exercise three. Okay, so let's look at number one. Liz is a patient volunteer. She almost never gets upset. Uh, okay, and then number two, Patrick cares about how the patients feel. Uh, so as we talked about before, um, when you care about someone's feelings, uh, we say that you are, you are compassionate. So the answer is he's a compassionate man. Number three, <clears throat> volunteering at the hospital is worthwhile. It helps people a lot. Number four, Luis loves books. He wants to volunteer at the library on weekends. Number five, most of the residents in the nursing home are over 70 years old. Okay, number six, I can't wait to start volunteering at the animal shelter. I'm excited about it. Number seven, I made a commitment to work one day every week. I volunteer every Saturday. Number eight, even if you work as a volunteer, a job may have many important responsibilities. You need to take it seriously. Number nine, there is an orientation meeting for the new volunteers tomorrow. And number 10, the volunteer coordinator will explain our duties and answer questions. Again, the, the volunteer coordinator will explain our duties and answer questions. Okay, uh, so for exercise four, this is a listening activity. Um, so I will play the audio and ask um, some questions. Uh, so here's the audio. Page 55, exercise four. Good morning, Ms. Baez. I understand that you're the volunteer coordinator for the Science Museum. Yes, I am. My name is Moi Wang. I'm interested in volunteering at the museum and I'd like to ask a few questions. Of course. What would you like to know? First, what kind of opportunities are there for volunteers? We use volunteers for many different things at the museum. For example, some are meet-and-greet volunteers. They greet people who come to the museum and answer general questions. Others are museum guides. This requires a special knowledge of our exhibits and different areas of science. What are you interested in? I'm interested in becoming a guide. I'm studying now for a degree in education. I want to teach high school biology. I think this would be a worthwhile experience for me as a future teacher. Well, you'll have to fill out an application, of course. Then, as soon as your application is accepted, you'll take the guide's orientation and training course. We also require a commitment of at least one half day each week. Do you think you can manage that? That would be perfect. I can't wait to get started. Wonderful. Of course, I can't say anything definite until you complete the training, but I hope to welcome you soon as one of our volunteers. Thanks very much. Okay, so um, in this listening, um, who are the speakers? 
The speakers are Ms. Baez and uh, Moy. I think it's Ms. Baez. Baez or Daya? Daya sounds like it's it's the correct name, but he it sounds like he's saying Baez. Um, so, um, who is Ms. Baez? Uh, you can say she is a volunteer coordinator for the Science Museum. Okay. What does Moy want to do? What does Moy want to do? <clears throat> uh, you can say um, Moy wants to, or he wants to volunteer at the Science Museum. He wants to volunteer at the Science Museum. What are the two types of volunteer positions at the Science Museum? So one position is uh, meet and greet. So what does a meet and greet volunteer do? A meet and greet volunteer greets visitors and answers general questions. Uh, the second type of volunteer is a museum guide. So what does a museum guide do? So we could say a museum guide needs to have special knowledge of exhibits and different areas of science. So a museum guide needs special knowledge of exhibits and different areas of science. So which one does Moy want to do? Which, which position does Moy want to volunteer for? He wants to volunteer for the museum guide or as a museum guide. He wants to volunteer as a museum guide. <clears throat> so now we can look at the question and it says, what does Moy have to do to volunteer at the museum? So we have to check two answers. <clears throat> uh, so in this case, um, hopefully you already checked the answers, uh, but in this case the answers, the two answers are um, take an orientation course and promise to work one half day a week. So if you make a sentence, you could say, Moi has to take an orientation course and promise to work one half day a week to volunteer at the museum. Okay, again, Moi has to take an orientation course and promise to work one half day a week to volunteer at the museum. Uh, and of course, he needs to fill out an application as well. Um, oh, let me ask one more question. Uh, what is Moy studying uh, now? What is he studying? <clears throat> Excuse me. He is studying education. He is studying education. Uh, and what does Moy want to do uh, in the future? What does he want to do? You can say he wants to teach high school biology. He wants to teach high school biology. So he thinks volunteering at the Science Museum would be worthwhile for him. All right. Um, so uh, that's the end of Unit 5, Lesson A. So we're going to continue to Lesson B.